This video is sponsored by Any.Run, a cloud-based platform used for conducting interactive malware analysis and providing insights into malware behavior. The first 50 people to sign up using the link in the description below get a free threat intelligence lookup voucher. Learn more about my thoughts on Any.Run in a few moments. So a little over a month ago, I was browsing my daily security news and I stumbled upon an interesting article talking about an open source variant called Async Rat. Async Rat being an open source malware variant is different and unique compared to a lot of closely guarded prolific malware variants out there uh, where they're typically rented out on underground forums to compensate their respective malware developers. So conducting a simple Google search on Async Rat will leave you with this official GitHub page with its author and source code and here freely available to download, which is quite interesting. And you can see that it comes pre-compiled with a keylogger, anti-analysis, config editor, thumbnails, and, and many more features. In today's video, I thought I would conduct a basic static and dynamic analysis of the async wrap malware variant and just kind of see what I can find. So a little bit of history on the async rat open source malware. All right, so async rat, the asynchronous remote administration tool as it's also known, a bit of history here. Uh, so it's an open source uh, malware variant written in C sharp by Nyan X cat on github.com. Uh, he first emerged in 2019 and as the name suggests, it's a rat or a remote access Trojan. So basically it allows attackers to remotely control infected machines once they've been infected and remote access Trojans can do a wide variety of different uh, activities, but specifically they can steal information, log keystrokes, maybe execute commands. Uh, now the distribution methods will vary, but it's going to be very typical in terms of phishing, malvertising, other social engineering attacks. If you actually go out on Google and just look up async rat uh, malware analysis, you're going to see some really cool reports of how uh, that is distributed and how it's ran on its respective workstations. So something that's a little bit unique to variants that are open source is that threat actors can go out copy the source code, and then add their own functionality. So that's a little bit different than the closely guarded applications or malware variants that a lot of malware developers will rent out. Okay, so a quick overview of the analysis tools that I'll be using in today's video. This is purely informative so that you know and you can go out and do this by yourself. I have a malware analysis series on this channel. I'll leave a link in the description below. As I've said, I'm gonna be conducting a basic static and dynamic analysis. For those of you who don't know, static analysis basically looks at what's underneath the executable while not actually running the program. So you're trying to collect any interesting information without running. And dynamic, as the name suggests, is when you're running the binary or executable to analyze its behaviors and impact on that system. Now, the tools that I'll be using primarily in today's video are gonna be the ones listed here. I have broken them down into static and then the dynamic capabilities. And I want to highlight one specific one, any.run, which full disclosure is today's sponsor. So any.run is a free interactive isolated virtual sandbox where you can access it through the browser, it provides real-time analysis of malware, and you don't have to worry about setting anything up on your end. So I'm going to be quickly going and running this malware variant on uh, any.run just to quickly show its capabilities. It's completely free. And uh, yeah, so regarding the setup in today's video, I'm going to be using something like the following. Um, so basically it's two virtual machines on VirtualBox. I have one that's running Windows 10 with the Flare VM uh, packages installed. And then I have a C2 server, which is gonna be Remnux, and it's gonna be running inet sim to impersonate a C2 server. It's not really necessarily a C2 server, but it does what it's needed. Um, it's gonna be running in the host only adapter network setting. So that means no internet access, which is good. We don't want internet access. Uh, so with that, I guess it's time. It's time to see what I can find. I don't know what we'll be able to discover, but 
I guess that's the fun of it. All right, so time to hop in and see what I can find. Now, this will not be a step-by-step -step tutorial. Uh, this is will be more so an analysis, overviewing what I found while I was conducting this analysis. And uh, yeah, so let's dive in and see what happens. While conducting an initial analysis on this video, I ran into this article recently published by Census that talks about the async rat malware. Uh, specifically with their search platform, it's kind of similar to Shodan in that it scans the internet. And uh, so, so something that's interesting, I just found here a little bit of tidbit. So as per this article here, the async rat uh, variant contains a hard-coded TLS certificate uh, by default, and it has the async rat server in its subject common name. So using the census search platform, and I just pasted this query as highlighted in the article, you can see how many uh, systems right now are out there, 92 hosts, running the async rat server side client, uh, which, yeah, you know, it's kind of interesting just to see. So that is just a little bit of a tangential. Moving over to my Flare VM virtual machine here, uh, up on Firefox, I have located on Malware Bazaar some uh, async rat variants that I can download. Uh, now, what's a little bit interesting is some of these ha are just the EXE, but there's PDF and a few other formats that I have found. Um, I, I don't think I can leave this in the description below, but you know, you kind of know where to find it if you want to. I will be downloading this specific variant here. I don't know if it's different, I'm sure it is, than some of these others, uh, but I am not going to be compiling from the original source code. And that is because I have to actually compile the binary in .NET, and then you have to deploy both a client and a server. I don't really need to worry about that. I would rather just see what's in the actual program. So I'm gonna be using a variant from Malware Bazaar. All right, so now with all of this behind us, it's actually time to see what happens. My initial goal in performing static analysis was to fingerprint and identify the basic properties of the malware sample downloaded on a malware bazaar. When downloading the malware from repositories, it's very important that you know the process of defanging, which is basically safely compartmentalizing the malware. Malware repos defang live malware samples by packaging files into an archive or compressed file extension such as .zip. Password protection is applied as another preventative measure in case of accidental execution. So one must be able to extract and then enter the password in order to download and then run the live malware. Once the malware was downloaded on my Flare VM machine, I uploaded the sample to VirusTotal to see which common endpoint security engines flag this specific variant as malicious. Hashes are generated from the sample as a means of identification. I proceeded to open the malware executable in PE Studio to gather more details such as strings, see the Windows API imports, and possibly identify if the malware is packed. Now, these details provide more clues into what is happening underneath the binary. Analyzing the strings embedded within the program can provide details into the functionalities, hard-coded values such as command control IP address servers, and other interesting details. For this sample of the async rat malware, I didn't find anything unique besides a list of .go file extensions. This seems kind of interesting. Maybe it's compiled in .go. The Windows API function imports shows the general capabilities of the program. So PE Studio highlights Windows API imports by flags, which are common API function calls used in malicious software. Here you can see this particular sample uses common API function imports such as write file, open process, git process ID. These can be used for process injection and of course, writing files onto the file system. Malware packing is the process of compressing and encrypting malicious software to evade detection by antivirus programs and security mechanisms. Now, one potential method to identify if malware is packed is to look at the virtual versus raw size of the PE section headers. If the virtual and raw size are similar in the size, then the malware is likely not packed, and the opposite may imply that it is packed. Now, referencing back into the activity summary of Fire's Total, I noticed some interesting indicators such as the executable file dropping a .pdf file in C users and a J 
as c.exe being used. I kept these in mind when I performed basic dynamic analysis. Now before this, I decided to upload the program into Cutter, a reverse engineering platform designed to assist in analyzing and dissecting software binaries for the purpose of understanding their functionality and structure. Opening the sample in Cutter led me to a state of confusion. I'm still a novice when it comes to reverse engineering executable programs. Getting down into the nitty gritty with x86 assembly instructions can be mundane and quite confusing if you don't know what you're looking for and, well, that person is me. One cool feature of Cutter is the execution flow graph. You can see jump instructions based on the execution flow of a function, and you can also look inside functions with the disassembler feature to reveal what's going on with the x86 code. I decided to run the binary through Kappa, an open source detection tool used to identify malicious behaviors occurring underneath the binary. A set of rules are run against the program to identify the possibilities of what's going on in the executable. So in Kappa, I confirmed the binary was compiled in Go. I also learned the binary is using the RC4 algorithm for encryption and Base64 encoding. I tried to locate the Base64 encoded strings and tried decoding them based on Kappa's memory address matches, but I wasn't successful in finding those corresponding strings located at those memory addresses. With this completed, it was time for me to transition into running the malware, aka dynamic analysis of this executable. Here in front of me, I have any.run up and open. It's a virtual isolated sandbox that lives out in the cloud and has all types of cool different features. So here in front of me is my home screen, and I'm just going to showcase a few little things you can do uh, to get your dynamic analysis environment up and running. This is uh, free to use. There is a pro version. You can use the link in the description below to learn out more, but let's go ahead and review just a few items here. So this is the dashboard. And as you can see, I can go up to the public tasks. So in the public submissions dashboard, it is a real time analysis of other vendors or people who are an analyzing different variants of malware. You can actually go into any of these um, environments and look at what happened when they ran that malware. So for example, let's say I wanted to look at an async rat variant. I can just type in async rat, that would be more beneficial. And I will find hundreds of public submissions happening. Uh, as you can see, it is today's date. Um, so what I've done is I've actually gone and clicked through one of these here and I've already opened it up in my tab. And this is a session of what happened when this individual ran this particular variant of async rat on a Windows 7 desktop. So you can see the processes being outlined here. Uh, you can see the uh, Git connection where it's going perhaps to a command and control server. Uh, and what's really cool is you can get the sample from this particular environment. There's screenshots attached. Uh, you can have IOCs. Any.run just released a new feature called Threat Intelligence, and in the Threat Intelligence dashboard, um, it's basically a crowdsourced threat intelligence area um, where as people run their malware within the Any.run sandboxes, different TTPs and uh, artifacts are collected and it's aggregated into this view or database. So in the threat intelligence dashboard, you can do a lot of different things. For example, you can look up Siracata rules, you can look at IP addresses, and you can see what popular types of malware uh, are being deployed in today's day. And um, you can see what popular techniques are happening. There's a lot of different really cool things you can do with threat intelligence, and it's all once again mapped to the MITRE attack framework. Um, you can take a look at their overview of what threat intelligence does. So clicking the threat intelligence lookup dashboard panel here, I can input any type of artifact such as an IP, a domain, I'm entering in the hash of today's sample that I've been analyzing. And as you can see, it was first found on the 16th of February. You get different types of information here. There's no IPs associated with today's sample. Um, but what's cool is that you can already see that somebody has uh, been out there and inputted this into the any.run sandbox. 
and uh, you can get all different types of information here. So threat intelligence is a way of contextualizing what you, maybe you've found out in the wild and you can see if it's been inputted into the any.run platform. The free mode allows you to choose or upload a URL or file, and then you can choose one of the following operating systems. In pro mode, you can do all different types of uh, configuration settings. For example, you can open a variant in a specific browser or temp directory, have specific applications installed. After a few moments, I have my active malware here, and I can play a video of what happened when I executed this on a Windows 10 workstation. As you can see, that little PDF artifact file has been found as well as certain processes are running, such as that jsc.exe. You can see what type of domains are being reached out to. So it looks like there's no hard-coded domain or C2 server in this particular executable. Um, and yeah, it's a pretty cool way of showing what happens in a, in a virtual isolated sandbox, you get a lot of telemetry that you can work off of when you're actively triaging your own malware samples. So any.run is completely free. There are no strings attached. There's also a pro version, which gives you a lot of more features and this threat intelligence dashboard, which is really cool if you're looking for crowdsourced IOCs. So using the link in the description below, you can find out more about this module, any.run and uh, the service itself. So on to the dynamic analysis here and trying to pick up what any.run found on their end and see what happens. Running the executable through any.run run, I had a general idea of what I was going to look for in Flare VM. So I loaded up my virtual machine, I set up the DNS server to be the Remnix server, and used the inet sim command line utility to impersonate common services, in this case DNS. Opening Wireshark and Procmon, I was ready to analyze the network traffic and processes happening on the operating system. Using the behaviors output from the virus total page, I was looking specifically for artifacts related to the PDF and jsc.exe binary. After launching the program, I opened Wireshark to see if any DNS requests were being sent to a command and control server. There were none. Procmon, or Process Monitor, is a very handy tool provided for malware analysts and troubleshooting general issues on the Windows operating system. With Procmon, you can see behaviors and processes associated with specific programs. Filtering for the malicious sample process, I wanted to see what types of behaviors were happening after execution. I could see that the binary was creating a PDF file in the C users directory. When navigating to the directory, I couldn't see anything. So I wanted to try to catch this PDF file as it appears maybe this is a decoy file being launched to impersonate maybe a document. Uh, and so I tried to rerun the sample two more times and try to catch that PDF file. I couldn't see anything. And even when I was filtering for hidden files in the file explorer, I couldn't see anything. Based on the Procmon events, it didn't appear that the PDF file was being explicitly deleted, so I didn't know really what was going on. Another cool feature of Procmon is the process tree. So in the process tree, you can see the various samples or the processes running on the operating system and its associated trialed processes. So as you can see here, the malicious sample that I ran had two child processes, the jsc.exe and warfault.exe. jsc.exe is a .NET compiler for JavaScript code after I Googled this. And remember that the original async rat sample is compiled in .NET. In addition, there was a subprocess for warfault under the jsc.exe. Wordfault.exe is a Windows program used to track and handle errors related to the Windows operating system. It is often abused by attackers to siloed a malicious DLL and execute code, as I found on this bleeping computer article. Now, here's what I suspect. The jsc.exe launches Wordfault.exe, siloads a malicious DLL so that it can run the async rat executable or the code and will pwn the workstation. And then finally, briefly overviewing uh, which registry keys were being edited 
as highlighted in the virus total behavior section, you can see that the keys related to the .NET compiler are being manipulated or used. So this perhaps is another piece of evidence for the sample being attributed to the async rat family. With all of this done, my analysis came to a conclusion. All right, so like that, this async malware has done a basic static and dynamic analysis. Hopefully you have enjoyed this video, learned something new. Uh, yeah, until the next time, have a good day.